This is the separation of the components of a mixture lab. Here are the different pieces of lab equipment. And over on the left there in that little green bottle is the unknown. So we are set, so let's get started. Here is the unknown for the lab. It's unknown number one. It contains unknown amounts of ammonium chloride, sodium chloride, and sand. We will weigh the beaker, the 150 mil beaker. So zero it. That's the mass. And because this was made up especially for this lab, here's the only lab technique we need to have for the transferring the unknown. <laughs> Normally it's a little more involved. That is the amount that we were given. That goes into the beaker. Now we weigh the beaker and the unknown. And knowing what the mass of the beaker was, we can subtract that off and find out the mass of the unknown that we start with. So here's our Bunsen burner. We're gonna get this going, so I take the striker and turn on the gas and get it going there yeah i think you can see that and we'll put it under here and actually we'll get the beaker on there first hold on you can see the flame is on here and it's touching the bottom we want it to hit and just kind of spread out on the bottom Beaker's ready here. Nothing has happened yet, but we should start to see the fuming of the ammonium chloride as it uh, sublimates. Let's see if that will happen here. If not, we'll pause. You can also see I have the flame off to the side because the fume hood is pulling on it. On it. Oh, there we go. You can see that now. It's been heating for about two minutes. You can see that white smoke is the ammonium chloride changing from solid directly to gas. And the fume hood is drawing that off. Let's see if we can go back a little bit here and see. And we're gonna let that go for about 10 minutes and see how much of it will go in that time. And then we're gonna weigh it after that. We're now about five minutes in. I thought I'd just show this as we go. It'd be a little tedious to watch the whole thing, but you can see that it's the ammonium chloride is riding up the sides here as it as it sublimates. It, it sticks to the cooler sides here, and then doesn't go away, or it takes a, long, a lot longer to go away. And what I'm going to do, I'll, let me just do it here, as they say in the lab book, kind of use it as a the flame as a, a flamethrower. And just go around the sides and heat those up. You can see the side should it's clearing up. I'm gonna go back to the bottom. The stuff falls off. It's centered here. The ammonium chloride falls off and goes back down to the bottom. Then we cook it up again, and it's just a, a cyclical process. Heating from the bottom, then the sides. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that for the next five minutes and see how we do. So this is after about 10 minutes, and I've been using the crystal tongs to turn it around and doing the little flamethrower trick. And it looks pretty good. I'm going to heat, um, let it cool in a second. And then once it's cool, weigh it, and then I'm gonna heat it another five minutes. But I'm pretty sure that I got all of it. But we'll do that little check. Uh, after the five minutes, if it's still too high, according to the test that they give in your lab book, then I'll have to do a third run, but I, I don't think that's gonna happen. We'll see. Um, another thing, about this, I use, I'm using this, uh, this wire gauze, this wire mesh here, rather than the clay triangle, mainly because it is so unstable that I'd say about one in three students drop their beakers using the clay triangle. I do it uh, probably one in five times. So as funny as it is to watch, 
uh, it does take a lot longer to uh, to get the lab done. So that's why I have this stable thing. The the uh, the positive of the uh, clay triangle, the, the reason to use is there's nothing in the way of the uh, of the flame, so the beaker can get hotter. But this works just fine. Mm -hmm. We're going to weigh the beaker with the residue, they call it. This is, uh, should be mostly just sand and salt. Might be a little bit of ammonium chloride in it. And now students will ask, how do I know when it's cool enough to touch? Well, first, if you're ever in doubt, you can just put your fingers by it. If you feel heat coming off of it, it's too hot. Uh, but what I always do is just say, let it sit for five minutes and you're guaranteed for a beaker, at least the top you should be able to touch. And then from there, you can just see if it's okay. Um, but this has been sitting almost for 10 minutes and the bottom of it feel is just slightly warm. But yeah, if you're really concerned, just let whatever you're, you've heated up sit for 10 minutes, you're gonna be fine. Um, okay, we'll put this in here, see what's, what we have for the mass of the beaker and the residue after the first heating. Try a uh, another five minutes. And if I see any, I, if I see any uh, of the residue form on the beaker, I'll flame throw it off. But otherwise, we'll just let it go for five minutes, and then cool it, and then weigh it again. So the test for um, from the lab book says that when we weigh out our sample, if it's under 69.499 grams, then we have to do a third heating because we're going to assume that we had a lot of ammonium chloride left and uh, maybe there's still some in there. So let's do this. Let's see what we get. 69.501. Awesome. So that's it. That's our second heating and that's the last one we have to do. We're going to assume that in that sample is only salt and sand and we can go on to the next step. So I added the 15 mils of water. I had the camera on for that, but then I messed up. I knocked the camera. So we'll just start from here. What we have is the salt and sand in the beaker. Now with 15 mils of water, that's going to dissolve this, the salt and leave the sand behind. Now I'm supposed to stir this for three minutes, so I will. I won't make you watch, so let me do that. Next, we're to weigh a piece of filter paper. 1.222 grams, and then we need to weigh an evaporating dish. It's 45.610 grams. So those are two masses we have to add into our report sheet. Next, we're going to filter out the sand and just leave behind the salt water solution in the evaporating dish below there. So that's a long stem funnel. And then I'm gonna put in a piece of filter paper, the one that we just weighed, wherever it is. I hate it. All right, so when you're, you're folding one of these, you just fold it in half. And then fold it again. like that and then if you see there's four sheets now you just take three on one side one on the other and you open it up oops like something like a coffee filter and then when you put it in here you can just zap it with a tiny little bit of water to hold it steady keep it from expanding out or popping out of there and then it's all set to go Next, we're going to add in this mixture here. The trick is that you want as little salt water solution going through as possible because we're going to have to evaporate that. So it takes a long time to do that. So we don't want to put a gallon of water behind this to wash it through. So I'm going to do first just swirl it and get as much of it in here as I can. And I'm going to use just a little bit. Oh man, I did not do a great job here. Okay, here we go. All 
All right, not, not sterling, but I think I only add maybe three or four more mils. We see that it is dripping through and it's gonna take probably three or four minutes to do that. So we'll come back. So here's the filter paper after about five minutes. There's our salt water, that's our salt solution. And then this is some moist, oops, moist sand. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do it while I'm holding the camera here. It's going to wash through the filter paper and the sand, and that should get rid of any extra salt, salt that was left behind. So it's going through again. So I'll give that another five minutes. And then we're going to put the sand and filter paper into the oven. And then we're going to start evaporating off oh, this massive amount of salt solution. Okay. All right, we're gonna take the, the moist sand that's in the filter paper. The filter paper is also wet. Put that here and, whoops. And because I'm holding this camera with one hand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and then I'll show you putting it into the oven. Now here's the oven. Open this up. Got a few levels here. And here's the sample. Put that right in the center. Normally you'd put your initials on it in pencil before it got wet so you'd know whose is whose, but I think I'm pretty safe since there's no one else even on campus. All right, and then we'll let this sit in here for, it said I think it was 20 minutes, uh, but I'll just let it go until I'm sure that it's dry. I've placed the evaporating dish with the salt water onto wire gauze and then I have the flame going, the Bunsen burner is uh, pretty low. What we want is for this to bubble and steam, but we don't want it to really go wild. You know, let this heat until about three quarters of that liquid is gone. So this will take a little bit of time. Once we're done with that, then we'll um, put it onto a beaker to make it the heating uh, even more mild so that it doesn't uh, spray out of the evaporating dish. So you can see that most of the water has evaporated away and that the, the salt has formed around the edges. So I took the evaporating dish and moved it to the beaker and the beaker onto the flame. So we're going to let it heat until all the water is gone. And then we'll come back and see what it looks like. But for now we're going to, uh, to weigh the dry sand that was on the filter paper in the oven. Here's the sand out of the oven. Can't really tell if you're just looking at it, but uh, the paper is very dry. And the sand is moving around really freely, so that's a good sign that it's, it's nice and dry. So we'll weigh it now. Okay, we're gonna put the filter paper. 2.620 grams, and then we'll subtract off the filter paper to find out how much that sand weighs. Here we are about 20 minutes later. You can see that the salt has formed. You might be able to hear the hissing, of the water that's left just seething through the, the salt. So we're gonna let this go for a little bit, and then I'm going to take the evaporating dish and move it down to the wire gauze and finish the heating there. Well, there's not a lot of water left, if any. I'm just heating it and the evaporating dish on the wire gauze. What I'm gonna do as the book had advised, this kind of flamethrower thing around the sides here, make sure any last moisture is gone. Here, no crackling, no, no hissing. I think it's dry. So we're going to let it cool 
and then weigh it. And the last data point is going to be the mass of the evaporating dish plus the dry salt. And with that, you have all the data you need to determine the percentages, the masses of each of the components and the percentage of each in your mixture.